I'm riding the Eurovelo 3 from Paris to Bordeaux and after 8 days out on the road I'm only a couple of kilometers away from my end destination, Bordeaux. Last time around I was able to follow a wonderful greenway for most of the day and it seemed like my luck would continue on this day as well. I can't begin to explain how much I love these greenways. They're basically totally flat, keep you sheltered from the sun and best of all it keeps you away from motorized traffic. So an enjoyable ride toward Bordeaux lay ahead of me. Once there I would board a fast train up to Paris, make my way to the airport where I would try to fit my bike inside of this plastic bag and get onto a flight that would take me back home to Sweden again. So join me for an eventful day here in France. Well, good morning and welcome to a pretty wet crayon uh, a bit outside of Bordeaux here in France. <laughs> so we have had a pretty interesting night to say the least. Today when I went over to the bathrooms I saw signs that they have put up from the government issuing a warning that there were going to be some severe weather during the night here. Apparently this region was about to get between 30 and 60 millimeters of rain during the night and I'm guessing we got a 60. <laughs> uh, so my bike was pretty dirty from all of the trail riding but now it's completely cleaned off. So that's one of the perks of having this rain. <laughs> it makes for easier cleaning when I get back to Sweden again. But uh, the worst of the rain happened just as I was uh, going to sleep so, so I don't think I went to sleep before one o'clock or so but then I slept pretty good so why don't we take a look at how this place is looking now in the morning so the bike looks pretty clean <laughs> you can see the difference here that's how it looked yesterday and now it's all clean <laughs> And the tent is pretty wet as well, but I've done this road here a couple of times before, so I know what to do. I usually try to separate the rain fly from the inner tent, and uh, if I get a chance later on today, I might pop it out and uh, use the sun to dry it off a bit. So let's start packing up our things and making our way down to Bordeaux. And just like that, we're back on to the greenway again. And I think we're able to follow this all the way into Bordeaux, if we're lucky. <laughs> now it looks like that on the map anyway. We have just over 20 kilometers to go until I'm in Bordeaux. And I just found a high chart here telling me that we're just about here now and I started up in Creon and we're making our way out to Bordeaux so as you can see it's slightly sloping downwards out to the coast so we should have a very pleasant ride ahead of us here and here's also a map of the region I started here in Creon in the morning I'm now in Sadeac and making my way to the Bordeaux city center.
all along the route there are stops catered to cyclists. Both cafes, bike shops or as in this case a combined bike shop and cafe. Well the greenway has ended and we made it to the La Garonne river. Uh, we're gonna follow all the way up to the city center of Bordeaux. It's only about five kilometers left but we're cycling along the river all the way to the city center here. Well, we're getting closer to Bordeaux city center now and I can feel the traffic started increasing a lot. Yeah, <laughs> don't like this. Gives me memories of Paris. But I think Bordeaux should be a lot better than Paris because it's a lot smaller town. So hopefully getting into the city center will be a lot <laughs> easier. But we'll have to see. This is the Cite du Vin, it's a very famous wine museum right in the center of Bordeaux and since Bordeaux is the wine capital of the world or at least France it's fitting that they have a wine museum here in town. Quite impressive architecture on this building here. So I've just made it to the Bordeaux train station and this is where I'm boarding a train that will take me back up to Paris again in about two hours time. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed since most of you probably know I haven't had that good luck with trains before, especially back up in Sweden. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a look at the timetable over here and see which platform my train is leaving from. Taking a fully loaded bike down an escalator isn't the easiest thing in the world. And I know that that sign means no bikes allowed, but I was in a hurry and I couldn't find an escalator or a staircase going up to the platform. quickly found my spot that I had reserved weeks ahead in advance. And this is a tip for all of you thinking about taking your bike on an express train in France. Book way in advance, since the number of spots for bikes are very limited. Typically there are only two or three spots per train. The whole procedure of securing the bike was very self-intuitive and after about a minute I was able to sit down and relax for the next two hours on the train. Okay. 
I thought I would be able to sit down and reflect about what I had experienced during the last nine days. But I got to admit I was pretty tired after the second night in a row with thunderstorms. So I basically fell asleep after a couple of minutes and slept for most of the ride up to Paris. Well, that train ride went smooth and I arrived exactly on time here in Paris. A lot better than my experiences with the train back home in Sweden. So now I'm just uh, taking the obligatory photo outside of the Eiffel Tower here and I'm, uh, I'm about to start heading east toward the Charles de Gaulle airport. Finally, I'm out of the worst of the <laughs> center here in Paris. So now we're just gonna follow this uh, nice trail by the river here, or the canal maybe. <laughs> I rode through this forest or park when I was going into Paris on the first day here about eight days ago I think. <laughs> I remember I turned off just after this came from the airport and I think I'm gonna take another way out to the airport now just follow the Eurovelo as long as I can because navigating from here to the closest uh, part of the airport was really tricky so I'm gonna take a bit of a detour and go with the Eurovelo so hopefully even though it's gonna be longer it's gonna be easier to navigate over there and less traffic. Thankfully the weather has cleared up somewhat, so it stopped raining, but it's not, <laughs> now I'm not complaining about the temperatures again. Now it's only 20 degrees, <laughs> which is perfect according to me. But I'm uh, still gonna wear my visible jacket here, so once, uh, if there's any traffic coming up along the road here, I'll be visible for the traffic to see. So here's what happened next. My flight wasn't leaving until the morning after, so I rode my bike out to a forest close to the airport and basically wild camped out there. It was pitch black when I got there, so I wasn't really able to film anything. But you really didn't miss anything since I basically just had dinner and went straight to bed. The morning after I was about to ride the last 10 kilometers out to the airport. And you'll have to excuse me for the somewhat shaky footage, 
but I figured I would prioritize my own security over getting steady shots. And at the same time I really wanted to show you the experience of riding out to the airport. So I'm left with this. I arrived at Terminal 3, the same terminal I left about 9 days earlier. I figured I would just do everything in reverse, so I boarded the shuttle over to Terminal 1. Where I knew I had a somewhat decent spot where I could reassemble my bike and pack up everything relatively undisturbed. In order for me to fly with my bike in a CTC plastic bag, there are a couple of steps I need to take care of first. I start with lowering the saddle a bit so that the bike will fit inside of the bag. Remember I have a pretty large bike, so this might not apply to riders with smaller bikes. Once that's done, I remove the handlebar pack and the accessory pack from the handlebar. These bags will serve as my carry-on bag for the flight home. I then turn the handlebar 90 degrees and fix the front wheel in its position by tying it down. I empty out some of the air in the tires but not all. Then it's time to put the bike inside of the plastic bag. This takes a couple of minutes so I thought I would spare you the details by fast forwarding a bit. I finish the whole procedure by closing the bag with some packing tape. So now the bike is checked in, so now we just gotta find where I'll put it to security and it's off my mind. <laughs> I'm usually so freaking nervous when I go through the airport, even though I've done everything I'm supposed to do and pre-booked my bike and followed all the regulations and so on. It's so, yeah, just such a hassle carrying the bike through the airport, so I make sure to get here really early. I think I was here now three and a half hours before. It takes usually an hour to deassemble the bike and uh, I want to get here before the crowd so that it's easier to check in. <laughs> so now we're just going to find the security check, which seems to be up in front here. So I have two flights today, first now to Stockholm and then I have about an hour until my flight to Skellefteå goes. So it should be kind of a nice journey here. <laughs> Sometimes I've had transfer times of about 30 minutes in Stockholm and <laughs> been basically running like a madman but an hour is uh, pretty generous with time. So here's what I'm bringing into the cabin of the plane. My helmet, my handlebar pack and a small backpack. So I've landed back home in Skellefteå now and I've picked up the bike and everything seems to be in order. We just got a small paint chip on, uh, on top here, otherwise everything seems to be okay. So now I've taken the bike out of the plastic bag, uh, turned the handlebar, put on the pedals and raised the saddle. So I'm just gonna pump in some air now and then I'm ready to go. And it's been basically just 20 minutes since my flight landed, so it's pretty quick to do it this way. And by the way, the, the bike is so incredibly dirty after last night with the rain, and especially I had to go through some sort of road work and uh, 
everything is so god dirty. I have to rinse it off when I get back home. Well, I'm back up and running again, and I have to admit it, it's a bit chilly. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, it's uh, 18 degrees, so it's perfect riding temperature for me. And getting back to Sweden again, you get other perspectives and realize just how pretty my country is. So I'm looking forward to doing a lot more adventures up here. And if you're ready to see, an adventure from Sweden, you can do so by clicking the link up in the corner here. Otherwise, until next time, have a good one. <laughs>